Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Extremely excited about doing this show. I find, finally had some wonderful viewers help me find the context of where this everyone is you pushed out concept has come into play. Now, I'm very familiar with the, I think it's in the Law and the Promise, where Goddard says the world is you pushed out, and I'm very, very familiar with that. I think that's a wonderful concept, and, and I'm behind it 100%. I've been fighting the everyone is you pushed out a little bit, and I'm glad I finally found the context of this quote, because one, it helped me understand where it's come from. Two, it's helped me understand the context of it. And three, I think it's actually helped me understand what he means by it. And again, I agree with this. So we're going to get into the concept of what what are you doing in this wonderful lecture he did back in October 30th, 1967. It starts as this. Many times I have heard someone say, I believe that imagining creates reality, but I once imagined something and it never came to pass. Then I ask, what are you doing saying I once imagined it and not imagining it now? For God's name is I am, not I did. Always thinking of God as someone outside of himself, man finds it difficult to keep the tense. But God is the human imagination, and there is no other God. Now, when they say keeping the tense, they mean the past tense, present tense, future tense, having to figure out the tense. It's always right now. That's the tense that we want to be able to see things in. When you imagine, you may include others, but do not think in terms of influence. Rather, think only in terms of clarity of form. Perhaps a friend would like a better job, more money, and greater responsibility. Before you imagine, take a moment and clarify the form of your imaginal act will take. Are you giving the celebration party, or is he? Where will, who will be there? Fill the room with those who would want to share in the celebration. Raise your glass and say, here's to your fabulous new job, your salary increase, and the challenge of your greater responsibility. Don't think in terms of trying to influence the friend's boss, for he could die or be discharged. Just go to the end. Toast the event and do not think of influencing others. The law, to be effective, needs feeling with form. Build a structure that would imply your desire is already fulfilled and enter its form with feeling. You do not have to be concerned about influencing others as they are not the cause. Your imaginal act is. Those who have had a billion dollars are not causing your world. You and you alone are doing it as your imaginal acts influence people. Everyone is yourself pushed out. So when you imagine, you are influencing people. Now, this is the first little circular point he's kind of done. Now, I want to point out right off the bat, he starts off with this little section and says, do not influence others. And he's correct. That is not the way you work at manifesting. In the case of trying to manifest more money, more career, more, more wealth for an individual, a friend of yours, even yourself, you're imagining the end. You're imagining giving the toast at his party. You're imagining seeing their new house. And you're giving feeling to that imaginal effort. What he's talking about here is not that you are manifesting others to do things, but you are in fact manifesting your desire and actors and actresses, and he will bring those terms up here in a little while, but others will fulfill those roles. We don't need to worry about influencing specific people because that specific person may not be involved with my manifestation. That specific person might not be there today or tomorrow. That specific person that I'm trying to influence may have nothing to do with my dream. So you hold the end result, you hold the dream, you hold the focus of what it is that you actually desire to have. You feel as though you have it already, and then you realize, I now have it. It is complete, as Goddard frequently quotes. Knowing that you have it now is the key secret. So you Do not have to influence other people. Everyone is you pushed out, meaning they will fall in line with what my desires are. He continues, Knowing what you want, place your attention on its clarity of form, and then watch what you are imagining. Are you remembering when you imagined something greater than what you have? If so, you are confessing you are not now imagining your desire fulfilled. If imagining creates reality, you must change your memory and become aware of what you are imagining right now. Now, he gets into a whole bunch of dream sequences and dream stuff and wonderful symbolism and dreams. I cut a lot of that out because it was just made this super long. And it kind of bounced around some subjects, but didn't really speak to the everyone as you pushed out or any of those concepts. 
So he continued after all the dream stuff. Now, there is an eternal brotherhood and fatherhood, for every individual is the father of the same child. How would I ever know that you and I are one were it not for this symbol? God placed eternity, his only son David, in the mind that man may know he is his father. And if you know David to be your son, and I know I am his father, are we not one? There is no other way of proving our brotherhood save through our common fatherhood. If you had a son and I had another, we could question this common fatherhood. But there is only one son who is loved by all. We are all one, but we will know it only when we have gathered in that one body, that one spirit, one Lord, one God, and Father of all. Always think in clarity of form, for as you do, you are influencing others. When I wanted to get out of the Barbados, I didn't think of influencing anyone. I simply used clarity of form and walked up to the gangplank in my imagination. The act caused someone 5,000 miles away to cancel their passage. And although there were hundreds ahead of me waiting for passage, the one who had the power to distribute the tickets chose us. So I did influence others. I imagined, and we came back, while thousands who preceded us in applying for passage continued to wait their turn. Do you know that the moment you draw a line, you encompass energy? That without an outline, everything is nothing. Draw your outline and make your picture as clear as possible. Perhaps you are going to a party to honor one who is present. Sit at the table with friends and raise your glass. Congratulate your friend on his new position, his greater salary, and more responsibility. Stick to that thought, and it will not matter to who is influenced. The moment you think of influence, you reduce a miracle to magic. All the people in the world are only yourself pushed out. No one has the power to hold you back or promote you, for you are self-promoted or self-restricted. And again, he's talking about right here that our dreams, no matter what they are, and he does actually get into specifics here. He talks about helping a friend out, how to get a ride on a cruise, basically, how to travel from Los Angeles to New York, how to manifest wealth, and how to manifest a chair behind a desk. And every single one of these different scenarios, he talks about holding the vision, understanding that that's what does the creation, the feeling of the wish fulfilled and the holding of the vision. And any people that need to get influenced by my manifestation so it can come true, meaning if there's some person at the cleaners that needs to do something and then that's going to lead to this guy over here driving a Ferrari and then he's going to go, oh my God, Dan Radio style, oh, I got to have him on my show, right? I mean, however it plays out, these things will fall in line. I don't need to worry about specifically influencing people. All I need to do is hold the end result, feel it as though I have it right now, and the rest of the pieces begin to fall in place. Blake tells us to enter into, not just observe, but enter into images in our imagination, to approach them on the fiery chariot of contemplative thought to make a friend and companion of any one of these images of wonder. For if we will, we will rise from the grave and meet the Lord in the air and be happy. Let us say you are in Los Angeles and want to be in New York City. You could enter the city on a fiery chariot of your contemplative thought by thinking from it and no longer thinking from Los Angeles. You enter into New York City by rising from your grave of flesh and blood in Los Angeles and meeting your Lord in the air, or essentially meeting your I am presence. Do that, and you will be happy in the doing, for that is how reality is created. Again, you don't think from where you are. I've done videos on this recently. I'll link it below. There's a great video I did on where you manifest from. You don't manifest from where you are right now. You manifest from where it is that you desire to be. And oftentimes, and it's sort of a mind game, but it's actually the reality and the way it works. But sometimes when you're manifesting from where you are, you might see obstacles. There might be problems in the way you might actually see people that you feel you need to influence. And in being caught in that thought process, it becomes difficult to see a way to the promised land. There's an obstacle in the way. There's something blocking my path. I don't know how I can do it. But when you manifest from the place that you're going, from New York in this example, when you manifest from there, it doesn't matter what obstructions might exist back in Los Angeles. I'm already in New York. Obviously, I made it. So whatever these obstructions are, there's a way around them. So it always kind of works better going backwards and connecting back to where you are, if you will, 
when where you are in your mind is New York. So you keep thinking you're in New York right now, and it doesn't matter that physically you might be in Los Angeles. That is changing. That's in process. Seeds planted and growing. And I just keep holding the end result until that is my experience. When you enter the state you desire to express and believe it is true, no earthly power can stop it from objectifying itself. And although you do not deliberately influence others, you influence everyone. As Sir James Fraser said, a man on this planet cannot raise a hand without influencing the farthest star in the heavens in its unified form. Practicing the art of imagining, and you will discover you can go anywhere and enter any time without the aid of anyone. Move in your imagination, and people will respond because of your action. Dare to assume you are wealthy, and watch everyone play their parts to provide you with the wealth you claim to have. They will, for they are only yourself pushed out. Again, People will support your decisions to manifest wealth, to manifest a job, to manifest more income, to manifest a new house, new car, new boat, new life, new plane. They will help you manifest love in your life. These people will come together and help you make these things possible. Don't focus on any one individual because you're not trying to influence any one individual. You're not trying to influence anybody. But by the very act of holding where I'm planning to be, where I'm going, where I am right now, by holding that feeling, holding that image, knowing this is real, being excited about that, that will cause others to work on my behalf. That is the us pushed out. That is the everyone as you pushed out. My need has been pushed out into society, if you will. And members of society, because I've sent my script out to a whole bunch of people, and a bunch of them replied back and said, yeah, yeah, I'll do this for you. And so they take care of the details. I don't have to worry about the details. Again, I hold the end result and the details work themselves out. The world goes on and on as the actors playing their numberless parts desire more and more things that vanish. Man is forever fighting for something that passes away. Yet he is told, do not lay up treasures on earth where thieves can take and the moth corrupt, but lay up treasures in heaven where no man can take from you. The treasures of earth can be withdrawn at any moment, but the treasures in the instructions I am giving you now are forever. Only one being was pierced, and that is Jesus Christ, your true identity. The crucifixion is over. You have been crucified with Christ, and your resurrection will take place in you in its own wonderful time. Two key sentences here. One, really. You have been crucified with Christ, which means we have crucified the older self. There's a great movie that's out. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's uh, Rocket Man, the whole Elton John movie. And one of the things that's really funny in that movie is there's a guy who tells this whole story about how he changed his name at one point. And Elton's like, so I just have to change my name? And he's like, no, you've got to kill the person you once were in order to be the person you are today. So we kill that part of ourselves and we become this new person, this new version of ourselves that knows this situation is occurring, that accepts this new version of me, that accepts my new consciousness as reality. And when you do that, your manifestation will take place in its own wonderful time. That is the part that so many have a hard time with. Goddard mentions that frequently. It's not that it's instant. You have it now, yes, but it needs to solidify into physical reality. And so you hold that I have it now concept until it physically is manifest or physically has solidified within your outer reality. You keep it real inside. Once you see it inside, it is real. And you hold that realness inside until it is now projected into your outside world. I ask you to test your imagination. Go all out and believe in what you have imagined. Do not try to influence anyone. Instead, put all your energies into clarity of form. If a certain desk designates that you are occupying a desired position, occupy that desk. Enter into the image, and you will realize your vision. Sit in the chair behind that desk and view the room. Persist in thinking from that point of view. If you do not physically occupy that chair tomorrow and begin to doubt, ask yourself, what am I doing? Remembering and not imagining? Then return to your chair beyond that desk. 
That final line is the jackpot. Stop remembering what once was. Stop remembering how it used to be. Reimagine what it's what you'd like it to be, essentially. It's when we pay attention to the fact that we don't have it and we go, ah, oh, I don't have it. I see I don't have it. We're forgetting that we do have it already. We're remembering how it was, not how it is. And there's a very big difference in those mindsets. So don't worry about influencing others. And don't worry about the fact that it might take a, its own wonderful time to manifest. Hold the vision inside yourself. Hold the feeling inside yourself until the outer reality shows it back to you. It starts inside and then will end up outside. And if there are any persons that you feel need to help you in this quest, any people out there that must be a part of this process to help you become or help you have whatever it is that you are desiring, those people will be influenced by the very nature of you holding the clarity of form, by you holding this image of how it is in your mind and remembering this is how it is. And the past is the past, and the past is changing. And frankly, if you want to think about it for a second, you're right now, right now, well, that's now in the past, isn't it? That now is just in the past. So imagine right now, probably not going to immediately have it. It's going to take its own wonderful time. Understand that you've planted the seed. Hold the vision, knowing full well that this is yours to experience. And that will become your reality. Dan Radio Style.